Well, Iran has unveiled a new ballistic missile to threaten the U.S. and Israel. The latest weapon can accurately penetrate regional U.S. bases and targets in Israel with a 900-mile range combined with improved shielding systems. The missile's unverified claims come as Iran continues international talks over its nuclear program. And joining me now to discuss this is Lester Munson, senior fellow at the National Security Institute and principal international at BGR Group. Lester, great to see you again. Thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, certainly a lot to talk to today, but I do want to start with Iran. Um, what more do you know about this new weapon, and should we be concerned? Well, it's important to remember that uh, Iran has a robust weapons program. They are pursuing nuclear weapons. They've been pursuing uh, missile technology for many years. When President Obama did his famous Iran nuclear deal, uh, missiles were intentionally left out of that deal. So since 2015, when the Iran nuclear deal was first uh, uh, brought forward seven years ago, Iran has still been able to pursue this missile technology. So what we're seeing here is really a failure of international diplomacy over the past few years in dealing smartly with Iran. We should have addressed this issue back in 2015 when we had the chance to get them to enact curbs on programs like these. There's no question Iran is the biggest threat to our interests in the Middle East. These missile tests demonstrate that rather effectively. Yeah, I want to turn now to the situation unfolding between Russia and Ukraine. The Pentagon is now saying a plan's in place to put U.S. troops in Poland to help Americans evacuate Ukraine if Russia invades. That said, there seems to be a lot of mixed messages when it comes to this situation. Uh, how likely do you think a Russian invasion really is? Well, we don't, we don't really know. I'm not sure Vladimir Putin even knows, but it is certainly a possibility. Vladimir Putin has amassed uh, over 100,000 troops on the border with Ukraine. If he wants to, he can go in, he, he can send those forces into Ukraine and they would very, very likely take over the country rather quickly. I don't believe anyone knows if he's made up his mind yet. I suspect at the end of the day, my guess would be he's not going to have a full-fledged invasion. It will be something much more modest, such as a land bridge from Russia towards Crimea, the part of Ukraine they took back in 2014. Uh, but really, no one knows at the end of the day. And I do want to say uh, there's been some mixed messages from the Biden administration on this. But in the last day or two, that's gotten better. President Biden has shown unity with European allies in this regard. So there is some good news here. Well, uh, speaking of President Putin, uh, on Friday he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing. The two leaders agreed that there is, uh, quote, no limit to their strategic partnership. Uh, Lester, what do you think that signals and how concerned should the U.S. and our allies be about this? Well, it's a serious thing. And there's no doubt that Russia and China have been have recognized the fact that they're both opposed to the West, to the United States, to individual rights and freedom and democracy, uh, and that they have a mutual interest in collaborating against us and the expansion of NATO and things like that. However, there are no real shared interests between Russia and China at the end of the day. And a lot of that rhetoric, and they, and they attach that to about a 5,000 word long document that kind of overstates the case for their cooperation. There are real issues between those two countries. They are not natural allies. They never have been. And at some point, China is going to figure out that Russia is a very small country with not many people in it and a lot of natural resources that China needs. And then we're going to see some real issues on the Eurasian continent. Lester, not a whole lot of time left, uh, but wondering, you know, what are you keeping your eye on uh, when it comes to threats? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think it's it's all of these things in concert. What we're really seeing is Iran, Russia, and China collaborating together. The fact that the Iran nuclear deal talks are again on in Europe right now at the same time that Russia is massing troops on the border with Ukraine and that President Xi Jinping is trying to lock down an unprecedented third term in power in Beijing this year. Those things are all of a piece. They are working in concert against us, and it is very important for the United States and its allies to recognize that. This is not, these are not three separate crises. This is one big crisis that we need to deal with. Yeah, and all very, very concerning. Lester, thank you so much for your time. We always appreciate your analysis. Thank you.